Hey everyone, my name is Carlo Libertini and thank you for tuning in today. We're going to be talking about one of the most amazing applications in my opinion, and that is Melodyne. I'm super excited about this because I'm a Melodyne user. I have been a power user for a very long time and I'm constantly learning myself. This is the kind of application that just changes with you. It grows with you, but that's why we're going to focus on how to make it work for you because there are some very important first steps to take in mind. Now, even if you are a seasoned user, this is the kind of stuff you may not be aware of, or if you're just getting started, this is what you need to know. All right, so these are important first steps for better editing. Now, I'm in the middle of writing a song, so this is a demo song that I'm working with. Melodyne's great for helping you with songwriting. Let's take a listen and test our audio at home, and let's listen to a little bit of what we're working on, and then we're gonna dive right in. Stay with me. So what we're looking at now is a polyphonic view of one of the guitar tracks. And this is where we're gonna start because this is key. Okay, right into the verse one right there. All right, let's get started. So how to get started? Well, first of all, you may be using any DAW of choice. It doesn't matter. Melodyne works in all of them. I happen to be using Studio One here, but it works great in Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, you name it, especially Studio One. It doesn't matter what your DAW of choice is. These fundamental techniques work in all of them. So just follow along. Okay, so what I did here is I wanna show you something really important. Here's one of the guitar tracks. And as you can see, I've already analyzed it with Melodyne. What I'm gonna do here is come up to uh, audio and I'm going to remove Melodyne. Now, again, it's gonna be different in your DAW of choice, but I'm gonna select this in here in Studio One, there's a number of ways. And as you can see, one of them is to come up to audio and choose edit with Melodyne. Now, before you get started, step number one is to understand what are you editing with Melodyne? Why do you have to use Melodyne? Well, if you have to, this is what you need to know. Looking at this chord here, this is a D chord, that's right. But a T chord, I mean, fundamentally, what Melodyne is doing is out of the box, it's over analyzing the audio. Now it's doing this partially because there is some distortion on this guitar. And when you add, when you enrich the harmonics of an instrument like electric guitar, often the overtones get identified as potential notes. That's why we're seeing all of this. So when you first analyze with something with Melodyne and you're getting all this information, you could feel overwhelmed, but don't. I'm gonna simplify it for you. That's why this is called Important First Steps for Better Editing. Now, here in the very beginning, let's solo. I'm gonna make the Melodyne window here a little smaller. Here's our guitar part. Let's take a listen. Okay, I'm going to raise the level and pan it center for us. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Carlo, you know, you're playing D chords and G chords, but there's too many notes here. Well, there are, because fundamentally, if you look at this at the very beginning, here we have a D right here, and then we have the corresponding A, and then the D again, and then the F sharp and G. But okay, so I'm playing four or five notes, but what is all? what are all these extra notes here? Again, it's being overanalyzed. And for you to have better editing results faster and better sounding results, you need to fix this. This is a really important step. So why don't we get right into it? There's a couple of ways to do this, but the folks at Celimony make it super easy for you. Because again, I call this making Melodyne work for you, and it's really important. Up here at the top of the Melodyne header, you've got this monkey wrench, the note assignment mode. When you activate that, okay, now you may feel really overwhelmed, but it's okay. What it's letting you understand is, okay, there's something you want to change, you've got the power. And that's what we love. And the easiest one is to come up here and understand what is your root note. Here's my D right here. Anything below that, here's my low frequencies, here's my higher frequencies, could be potentially over-detected notes. So I'm going to take the Venetian blinds right here and bring it up to my root note. 
to that D right there and let it go. Read your text. Now, keep in mind, you are not removing precious audio. When you see those notes uh, disappear, they're reconsolidated back into the registers where they're supposed to be, where their fundamentals are. So you're not removing audio here. You're just changing the view. And that's what we want to do. We want to take what we're sonically hearing to match what we're visually seeing because that's really part of the power of melodyne is because it really does give you a great visual of what we're sonically hearing ears first eyes second but they both have to work together all right let's do the same for the upper register so now i know i'm playing here's my f sharp and here's my g so everything above that is going to be potentially over detected let's take all of these overtones and we can eliminate them here's something i could prove to you if you go back to our note mode and you see the extra notes, you can play them. Now, you know, I didn't play that note there. I'm using my arrow keys in the keyboard. You can see the notes being highlighted. And again, you could just select any note to hear to audition and say yeah i definitely didn't play that note that's another way to verify it if you need to go uh to that degree now back to our note assignment to uh mode let's take the upper notes and bring it all the way down to my g i did not play any g sharps here we go let it go now it's being redetected consolidating all the information and it's compartmentalizing this now into what looks like a d chord g chord performance okay so again we can have a more accurate visual to what we're sonically hearing okay but it gets better now now again keep in mind that mixing is cumulative and i started this by saying why am i reaching for melodyne well maybe i hear it the intonation isn't right on one of those strings. Sometimes happens when you're playing open chords, you know, some of the notes are perfectly in tune, but you may be pulling one of them a little sharp. Uh, and I could see that here with the A note. So let's go to, I'm gonna zoom in right now and show you that right here. Here we go. Here's my A note, here's my D. Here we can play those notes again, remember? Uh, and here are all the A notes. Now I can look at this and say, okay, you know what? It's a little bit north of sharp, okay? Let me bring that back. If I select this note, here's A. Uh, let me go up to my G clef here and let's turn this on to pitch lines for a moment. Now this line, this line right here is in the center of A and I could see and hear that it's pulling sharp. So when I pick that note now, I'm going to see that's an average of 18 cents sharp. How does it sound in the chord? Well, it sounded a little bit off to me. Now, I, once you've consolidated all your, your visual like we did in that important first step, this is how your editing becomes easier. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I could take this note and make sure by right clicking, I could say key snap. Yep, I'm going by pitch lines. Okay, that's fine. You could change it back to key if you want uh, and the dark gray boxes here the darker gray ones are notes that are not in the key of d and the white ones are ones that are i like doing it this way myself but again to each their own so try it both ways and see which one works for you i'm going to now go to pitch mode and you can select that note and double click it and put it right in tonal center that's one way to do it but you're not going to sit there and go okay this one this one this one there's a lot of notes in this performance even though it's a short demo so one fast and easy way to do this would be right here in the note block select this region and it's like taking the entire string whatever's played on that string now and i could double click it and bring it all down into tonal center but remember you have to listen and this is cumulative these notes also have to work in conjunction with the other guitar and instruments in this arrangement so 
you know, listening is crucial. Plus, if you're going to, if you play the same guitar, uh, maybe you're pulling all the A notes, you got to go to all those tracks and, uh, and re-intonate these notes as you see here. All right, let's take a listen to this. And again, this is all possible because we took that important first step of making Melodyne work for us by consolidating and controlling our visual. Now, I'm going to undo that. Let's zoom back in and I'll show you another trick. Because if you feel that, okay, you know, maybe a little bit of uh, sharpness there is natural, feels organic to you, another way to do it would be to hold Alt on your PC or Option on your Mac, and then you can free yourself from the grid and put the note anywhere you'd like. So I'm going to actually take that note and I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to in tune, but not completely. Let's check it out now. So you have that level of control too. Now you remember when we started this, there was a lot, there was hundreds of notes here. And you might think to yourself, oh my gosh, I gotta go and do this to every one of those notes. No. By making Melodyne work for you and doing this initially on every track, you are making your workflow so much easier. That's why I think this is really important. All right, so now that we've got this going on here, let's bring in a, a, another track, as I mentioned before, to make sure that they coalesce and they work together. All right, so let me go back to my mix and let's take, let's take the other track here. We've got the other track right here. And I, let's bring that into Melody. I'm gonna do Control M here, and this is what it's brought me to. Now you may be like, okay, okay, where are we going with this, Carlo? Well, I'm gonna show you because again, this is all about having advanced workflow techniques in Melody. So now you can see the multi tracks are populating here in the track view. Here's my D chord that we just edited, nice and neat, and here's another track layered there. And we can layer them in together by holding control here on my, my Windows keyboard and bringing them together in the same editing window. But you notice that we did edit one of these tracks. We want to make sure that they work together. And the first thing I want to point out here is that the guitar we just brought in has been, because it's a bit of a percussive performance, let me show you what I mean. Let's play this track. You'll hear what I mean. It's also misanalyzed it, which is a second part of making Melodyne work for you, is to understand that you're in the right, correct analysis. Let's take a listen. All right. Let's bring that in here. And I will pan it center. Yeah, that's better. Now you may say to yourself, well, everything looks really percussive. Did Melodyne detect this correctly? I want to see individual notes. This is a polyphonic performance after all. It's a guitar and those notes are being played and layered over each other. Come up to algorithm, you can see that it's detected it as a melodic. Why? Because maybe because of the performance feel, but this is why you need to make Melodyne work for you. I'm playing guitar. Sust polyphonic sustain is great for like a pianos or orchestral where you're holding out some notes longer. Decay is great for more rhythmic uh, instruments like a guitar. So I'm going to select polyphonic decay. It's going to ask me, do you want to redetect? And I say yes. And now we're going to have a better view this way. You can see how the notes are all more consecutive. But remember, going back to our first example, what are all these notes? It's simply being overdetected. If I select one of these notes up here in the high register, I did not play. <laughs> these, this is amazing. I love doing this. So what we want to do now is correct the view like we did before. And if you remember, follow along with me because repetition is good. Come up to note assignment mode, the monkey wrench, grab the blinds and say anything. Uh, we can actually make this really simple. If we're just working with timing, for example, anything above that is over detected. And here we go. 
Okay, and if you have to recorrect it, bring it up. Bring it up more. And Melodyne is working for you. It's just as easy as that. So you're in complete control here. Let's really, let's make this right about there. Let's say we wanted to keep it. This is where we're happy with fine. Just want to show you for demonstration. Here you go. Now, what about the notes in between? Go back to note assignment mode. I could select just those notes, double click them. And remember, you're not removing these notes. You're consolidating the energy back into closer into their fundamental zone. Uh, so you get more of that root note. And it's really, really important because we're streamlining our work. And when you're done, bring it out like this. Now, why don't I pan that guitar left and this one right? And let's see how they work together now, because mixing is cumulative. And we've got both tracks here. Now I'm going to use my Melodyne Magic to see, even though they're two independent tracks, I'm going to overlap them. And this is amazing. Using control on my keyboard, I'm going to activate that note right there. And there we have. Here we go. So we've got both guitar parts happening at the same time. This works for anything, dare I say, even vocals. Although with vocals, I do a lot more critical listening. But these fundamentals are important. Now, I'm going to go back to just my first rhythm guitar uh, right here, the D chord. And we talked about tuning it up. Now, again, this technique I'm going to show you right now is more like a, a hammer. You're just going to bang it all into place. Uh, critical listening is key, but I need to show you this because I think it's also important. We talked about tuning just one note or an entire string within this chord. Well, what if you wanted to just get everything in tonal center? Well, again, up here under the G clef, if you right click, make sure you're in a key snap. That way you, you'll avoid accidentals. We're in key and note names. All right. And by the way, notice that I've got the chord names ident um, identified here because when you go it's really great right here show chords it's also detecting the chord changes Melodyne's pretty resourceful that way if you don't want to see that you can remove it right there if you do it is right there all right now if i select all of these notes or well let's select them all right now it'll be easier and then take my pitch tool and double click any one of them now they're all been tweaked to tonal center uh, will it sound good? Well, again, it's all relative. It depends. Let's take a listen. Not bad, actually, right? Let's bring in the other guitar. And we are now editing. This technique about making it work for you and taking that first important step to control the over analysis is crucial because now you can see how you're going to work faster, easier, and smarter every time. You know what? And why stop there? There is a, another guitar part, but there's also a lead part here. Let's have a little bit of fun because uh, I want to show you now uh, this the riff I played in the very beginning is kind of a combination polyphonic and melodic, and that is right here. Let's bring that in with my key command, and here is the riff. Every note's played out for you right there. Now notice there isn't a lot of over detecting here because it's it's a very melodic. And if I come up to the algorithm, it correctly identified it as melodic because that is mostly what it is. Again, super intelligent. Thank you, Salamone. Uh, by the way, I just noticed something. Let's zoom in on this last, this, this bendy note right about here. Uh, and let's do some actual editing because this is bothering me as a guitar player. Uh, this note right here, you can see it somewhere between A and A, sh <laughs> A sharp here. So it's pulling sharp already and it's, it's kind of bugging my ear. Let's take a listen. All 
All right, let's fix that while we're here because uh, I have to because I played this. Um, I'm going to select just this part. And it's snapping uh, to the semitones, which is fine, but I'm going to hold my alt and I'm going to stretch it up a little bit there and I'm going to do something like that. Let's take a listen now. I'm editing. Ooh, not bad. Let's hear that in the context of the mix. And you can see how our workflow is happening naturally in Melodyne within our host application, whether it's again Studio One or Pro Tools or Logic, you name it. <laughs> I like that a lot better. I'm glad we stumbled upon that. Uh, and okay, now we are populating our Melodyne tracks view here, remember? Here's one guitar part. Here's another, and here's the solo. And again, if I hold control, we can view them all on top of each other at once. Uh, there's another little part here, a little harmony that I created. I'm gonna right click and choose edit with Melody. And let's populate this into our session and let's bring our solo over that. And look at that. Now we can see the harmony part that I played. We got one guitar line here and another guitar line here. I love it. Uh, There's a note here, by the way. In this one, the harmony is a little louder. I'm going to select that note, grab my, I'm editing here. I'm editing now. Imagine that, grab my amplitude tool, and I'm going to increase the volume of just that note and bring this one down a little. That one seemed to also detect great. What I'm doing is looking for over detections and making my editing a lot easier here. All right, so now we have, here's a guitar part, which we can consolidate a little bit more. If you wanted to go back again, note assignment mode, grab the Venetian blind, say, yeah, I, you know what? I want to redetect that. Here we go, and we're back. This is one guitar part. Here's another guitar part. Here's a solo riff part, and here's a harmony part. Uh, let's bring them all in together, and let's hear our work so far. that high note that we edited there. Great. So making Melodyne work for you is an essential key part. Again, using the default detections to kind of like make the choices for you isn't always going to work with every kind of music style. Let's face it, whether it's country, pop, hip hop, rock, you name it, acoustic. So being able to control how the detection happens, as I showed you in the beginning, it was being overanalyzed. There was a little bit of distortion on these guitars and that when you excite those harmonics, I often feel from my experience that Melodyne does detect those excited overtones as potential notes. So by consolidating everything down to the exact notes that you're hearing and playing, your editing is way more easier, way more streamlined, way more faster. And it's also way more consolidated because you're able to work with multiple tracks at once like we're seeing here and being able to edit the timing correctly and not have to potentially grab notes that are really first, second, third order overtones accidentally. And this happens a lot because again, whether you've been using Melodyne quite a bit, you maybe just wanna jump right in like, like everybody does. Uh, but remember, this is just something you should do all the time. Just check it. And you also want to check if the correct algorithm has detected your audio. Like in that second guitar part, it detected it as melodic, but I wanted polyphonic decay, which is the more rhythmic version of the polyphonic detection. All right, and that is that. So remember, work smart, but have fun and stay creative all the time. My name is Carlo Libertini. Thank you for watching. Stay creative and watch out for more of these Melodyne videos coming your way. Thank you, everyone.